about. I personally know that it's a whole special specialty on its own. What is it about? Why we need to take a uh, keen, um, you know, focus or interest on this particular matter? How exactly are we supposed to handle uh, different situations where we have wounds and everything for, for us and for people around us? Welcome, Dr. Thank Kari. You. Thank you so much. Glad to have you with us. Glad to have you here as well. Ah, so mm -hmm. for, like I have, I've just said, and I, I had told you before, I didn't know that uh, there's a whole, you know, it's a whole specialty that uh, a doctor can specialize in, uh, you know, wound treatment. You tell us a little bit about it. Uh, actually, it's an open uh, uh, forum for nurses and doctors. Uh -huh. uh, all can specialize, can advance uh, their programs into uh, wound specialties. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a science whereby you study more about tissue viability, how mm -hmm. tissues heal. Uh, making wound heals heal quicker and mm. such. Okay. Uh, so it's it's a it's a very interesting docket uh, just to observe wounds heal quick. And like all the methods used whereby you find someone will end up with an amputation or will end up with some very life threatening situation. Mm. Uh, now things have been made simpler, but just the same uh, specialty. Uh, it has really improved a lot on the care. Okay, and uh, you, as we go on, you're going to tell us, you know, what new technologies or what new uh, science has been implemented to improve on uh, this care, particular mm. care. Uh, for starters, tell us the different types of wounds that mm. are there and uh, the best way of treatment for them. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very broad uh, question. Okay. Uh, we categorize wounds, okay, when you're talking about different types of wounds, there's those ones that falls under trauma, uh, for instance, uh -huh. cut, we have incisions, surgical, and both maybe from home, you've cut yourself with a knife and, uh -huh. uh, with a knife and so forth. Uh, those that falls under burns, uh, I'm very sure you talk about burns, everyone think about fire and yeah. something hot. <laughs> exactly. uh, this is also uh, burns from chemicals, from radiation, mm. from electricity. Uh, even there is what we call negative thermal uh, effect, whereby you've been subjected to extreme cold temperatures, you can still have a burn. Okay. Uh, like frostbite is a kind of a burn, but from a negative um, uh, thermal effect. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are those that are caused uh, by uh, predisposed commodities like uh, diabetes, uh, maybe find uh, a low immunity, the vascular conditions like uh, Mm -hmm. uh, this venous ulcers, arterial ulcers, uh, those are caused by uh, vascular uh, mm -hmm. commodities, uh, comorbidities. Uh, then we have those ones that are caused by uh, auto or immune deficiency, like uh, get patients with HIV. Mm -hmm. Some of them normally end up with uh, uh, some uh, funny and healing wounds. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so you can categorize according to many ways. So there is burns, we have trauma, uh, those that falls under uh, predisposing comorbids. Uh, then we have also uh, pressure ulcers. This is very uh, common. Those patients lying in one position for too long or the uh, turning is a little bit difficult. They end up with a, uh, pressure ulcers as well. Those, those are type of wounds. So, pr okay, pressure ulcers, that's, a f that's the first I'm hearing of it. So uh, commonly, uh, people know it's bed sores. You've heard of bed sores. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, no. uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, learning. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, for for all these categories, is there a specific treatment type for, let's say, burns, um, for uh, the trauma mm -hmm. type of wounds? Uh, now, we, that is what we mentioned now, the science of wound healing. Mm -hmm. uh, there are faces that you normally observe. Some wound follow a, spe spe a specific uh, path of healing. So that is what we manage. Uh, for instance, uh, those that uh, are caused by trauma, mm -hmm. you find that a wound bleeds then from bleeding. So uh, this is a specific, uh, uh, okay, mm -hmm. time, let me don't use so much heavy terms. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a path that uh, they follow to heal. Uh, this is a hemostatic phase whereby the body initiate a process to stop the bleeding then uh, there's an inflammatory phase whereby uh, the body fights back. There is those bacteria introduced in the wound or uh, mediators which need to start to initiate uh, growth, those growth factors. Uh, that's the second phase, the inflammatory phase. Then you have the 
proliferative phase whereby mm -hmm. tissue starts to germinate and grow. Okay. Uh, then uh, after that, we have the maturation phase at the end whereby now the already tissues have grown, now they mature up. Mm -hmm. Or a scar formation, now scar is being uh, reduced to normal skin. So all wounds have a specific path they follow. So that is what you normally imagine. That's why you talk about uh, wound care being a science. So you observe the science, you treat it according to uh, what uh, uh, the course take. Uh, in some modules I was talking about, the wound speak to us. Uh, what it needs is what you give. If, for instance, if uh, there is an infection, treat the infection. If uh, there is non-viable tissue, uh, treat or remove the non-viable tissue. If the wound is healing, promote uh, more healing. Yes. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And you've mentioned you a module. So do you teach on, on this also? Uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've partnered with some association uh, so that we can be able to pass on this message across to healthcare practitioners uh, like the National Nurses Association of Kenya. Uh, we reach a lot to uh, nurses uh, and doctors who are interested in these uh, programs. They come on board and uh, we just pass on the knowledge. It's something which is very key. Mm. Uh, the other thing that we do, okay, I'm, I'm an executive member of the Foot and Limb Group Salvage. Uh, uh, being there, we tend to, it's a multidisciplinary approach. We pass on the message across as well to nurses and doctors so that uh, we can all be at par. I know not everyone loves wounds, but at least yeah. when you're having that basic information on management, you can be able to help uh, or maybe pre prevention of complications and such because you have at least the basic information. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of uh, preventing further damage to be uh, be done, what would you say is the best uh, course of action to take f uh, as first aid for for someone who has a uh, fresh wound mm -hmm. that you've come across? Is it something that you should take care of, you know, as as yourself, or you know, to help a person before they get to a medic mm -hmm. that will prevent further damage? Uh, for wounds, okay, what matters as per se is uh, uh, the degree. Uh, there are those wounds which you can be able to manage from home. Uh, there are those wounds which definitely needs a medical practitioner to attend to. Mm. Uh, for instance, those superficial, uh, by superficial I mean those that just uh, involve the top layer of the skin. Those are things that we just hygiene, uh, cleaning, even just basic tap water can uh, be able to resolve and covering them. Don't leave any wound open. Eh? You have to cover regardless of how small it is. Mm. So for such, uh, those ones can be managed from home. But uh, uh, wounds that get now to deeper tissues, uh, the skin has got like three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. Anything penetrating mm -hmm. past the superficial, the top layer, uh, then it's of interest to be seen by a practitioner. Uh, remember there's the issue of now infection. The skin contains a lot of bacteria which if they find broken skin they get inside uh, can really escalate into something completely different. Uh, so remember some wounds involved like if it's deep it cuts uh, blood vessels, mm -hmm. cutting nerves, that's why it's important for them to be seen. It might be even uh, uh, not really of concern, but uh, at least being seen mm -hmm. uh, comes very important. Even uh, uh, injection of this tetanus toxin, those are factors that normally uh, want to have done early, at least within the first 72 hours after a cut. If it's penetrating, then uh, mm -hmm. go to the facility for that. Speaking of tetanus, because I was also coming to that, you know, we've, we know and we've heard that you, when especially if it's a... Uh, you know, a metal, metallic object that has cut you, then you need to get a tetanus injection. Mm -hmm. Is it only limited to, to you know, a metallic object uh, cutting you, or do you just need a tetanus injection if the, the cut is deep? What, you know, uh, determines, the, uh, you know, the right course of action? Uh, uh, those cuts that you, occur injuries which compromises the integrity of the skin, that you don't know the origin, you've fallen down and you have a bruise, a big bruise, uh, you don't have a look. Uh, it's important to get the shots. Uh, uh, that is whether, uh, whether deep or not. Uh, okay. We normally overlook. Ideally, uh, 
any cut, but you see, we can't. Uh, we subject mm -hmm. ourselves to cuts almost every day. We can't, <laughs> can't be running for uh, injections, uh, for, for injections every other time. Uh, so they're normally like uh, schedules for getting these shots. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. There is a number of there's a limit. Your body now can be able to like uh, fight back. Remember, these are normally uh, some uh, attenuated viruses or uh, they just weaken virus. So the body can be able to like uh, fight back as well. Okay. So uh, we we advocate for these shots because uh, the complications normally, for, let's say one is subjected to you know, this uh, tetanus itself, uh, uh, it's life limiting and life threatening because it affects the nerves. The nervous system becomes compromised mm -hmm. and it can compromise not only the limbs including the respiratory system, uh, any system with a muscle can be compromised. So you find that it is important to protect uh, mm -hmm. uh, yourself. Uh, get this jab. You have an injury penetrating, or you know the object, maybe something rusty, or maybe some injury which you don't know how you got it. But uh, let's say even after an accident or something, uh, um, you ensure the practitioner gives you the, the jab. Okay. Uh, All right. Interesting. Mm. I think I have missed so much. <laughs> I have, I've received so many cuts. I've never gone for a tetanus injection. Some might remember. not be really necessary. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, so now, uh, how do you, because you've said it, uh, for you to handle the situation, it, it, it determined by the severity of uh, the wound. Mm -hmm. How do you, for a normal person, ordinary person, how do you determine that this needs to get medical, proper medical attention? Mm -hmm. It's beyond me. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as Kenyans, we know how to treat ourselves. We know so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have our own knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then we assume we know it all, but mm -hmm. it, we might get to us. So how do you determine the severity of a situation? Um, for open wounds, um, wounds which don't heal, like uh, this, what I mentioned about the, the, the pattern or the path, the course in which wound healing uh, uh, takes. Mm -hmm. uh, so a wound which does not follow the sequence, it's not, uh, uh, tissues are not regenerating or this continuation or continuity of uh, bleeding or some we find that there is some funny uh, fluid coming from the we call purulent exit. So the lang common language is pus coming from ah, it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, those are clear markers that the wound is out of hand mm -hmm. and uh, should have been attended to like earlier on. So non-healing wounds, if you're having uh, any even odor or you're having uh, uh, dead tissues, some will manifest even by dead tissues. Uh, those ones should have been seen in the facility. That's why we're saying uh, don't overlook any, if, regardless of how simple it looks like, don't overlook because uh, there might be some other underlying thing that you're not uh, mm -hmm. seeing. Uh, uh, including even small things like pimples, like, uh, okay, not all are uh, just ordinary pimples. Some got a history behind. Okay. Uh, so, uh, those breeze, those deep penetrating cuts, uh, anything, any discoloration on the skin, it might be something uh, brewing inside. So uh, just have it seen. So you can see that this is too, I'll soon I can be able to do at home. Uh, anything you suspect like, uh, no, this is way too much for me, as in, but don't wait until it gets to that, just have it uh, looked at. Okay. Yep. And we've talked about, the, uh, what we've talked mostly about is on the trauma. Hmm. type of wound and the open wound before we move on to even the bands what about uh wounds that i, I don't know if it's closed wounds or <laughs> you know where you just have um how do we call it you have l let's say fallen and then you feel pain from inside and then uh, you have uh unafura mkon or something mm -hmm. is that also another type of wound that you would say um, uh, we normally say if if the integrity of a uh, uh, skin is not okay by definition we normally define a wound by uh, it's an injury which compromises the normal integrity of the skin. Okay. Uh, so if the integrity of skin is not compromised, then it's, uh, it's not a wound. But remember, there's some physiologies which or some uh, pathophysiologies which mm -hmm. manifest. They begin from inside. Like something is happening on the inside, but eventually it ruptures out, uh, uh, causing now a physical wound. 
Uh, so you've fallen, uh, uh, there is a swelling. Those ones have to be looked at, for instance. There might be bleeding underneath the skin or it's an inflammatory injury. Maybe after a tendon tear or rupture or maybe some ligament have been damaged, definitely the body will respond by an inflammatory weight. It will inflame and swell up. Mm -hmm. uh, such kind of injury as well uh, requires to be seen. Or maybe there is a fracture which is poking tissues on the inside. Uh, maybe there's an, even an internal bleed. Such kind of things have to be looked at. You're not seeing there's a physical uh, wound on the outside, but inside there might be some uh, damage. I'll even talk about maybe uh, things mm -hmm. like uh, uh, those pressure ulcers. Uh, precious ulcers, they don't form by just a wound happening on the skin. If someone is lying on one position for too long, the bony prominence is pressing against the tissue, so the injury begins from the inside. Inside out. Um. Uh, by the time you're seeing it outside, uh, the entire inside is already compromised. So uh, even such, that's why we normally advocate for even healthcare workers at home, like not everyone is in the facility, some people are being taken care of from home, like uh, doing a physical head-to-toe examination. Uh, there are those we normally call uh, pressure areas, uh, you just need to assess and monitor. Mm -hmm. You need to know between the good tissue, the good tissue looks like, so that when you see the bad tissue, you can easily identify. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. All right, mm. interesting. And now that um, you, there's, do we have basics or key principles of wound management? I know you said a wound is always supposed to be covered. Mm -hmm. You know, are there other basic? Uh, principles of wound management for someone at home who doesn't have a severe uh, mm. wound? Uh, I will say yes, eh? there are principles and guidelines which should be, protocols which should be followed. Uh, okay, one is all wounds have to be covered. All wounds have to be covered. Uh, then two, uh, mm. uh, if it's at home, uh, you should minimize uh, regular uh, dressing changes. Uh, these days we are having a lot of technology, there are dressings, dressing materials which are available which minimizes exposure because remember the environment at all might not be completely ideal to expose oh, wounds because possibility of contamination from different surfaces or even from the provider at home. Uh, so there's no ideal environment for uh, opening a wound at home. Yes, you can be able to create it but uh, it's not that easy. Uh, so, appropriate dressing material, most of them can even do five to seven days without change of dressing. It enhances quicker healing, there is less interference ah. with the, uh, uh, the healing process. Uh, but that one has to be prescribed. Uh, you don't, if not a medical practitioner is coming to do it, uh, you should have been given some basic information on how okay. to achieve the sterility process, how to do the changes, because at times maybe you find the hospital is expensive to take the patient, but you can be able to learn and do it from home. Uh, then uh, uh, reporting, uh, you need to be reporting to a certain uh, healthcare practitioner that uh, I've exposed, this is, how it look, this is how it was, this is how it looks like now. Uh, is there anything of concern that you need to adjust or maybe should we bring the patient for a review? So even if you're managing the patient at home, you need to uh, also uh, associate with a certain facility where you can be able to be reporting on the progress. Okay, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's now talk about the, the bands. For, for the ban, is there, what is the best first aid to do or the password before they go to even see the doctor? In the event maybe there's a chemical ban or mm -hmm. from a fire, mm -hmm. what is the best way to handle someone? Uh, Bands is a, is, is, a, is a very uh, interesting uh, kind of a wound. It's unlike most other wounds. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if I just uh, tell you the difference, you find yeah. that for other wounds, uh, there's a physical injury. Maybe it's a cut yeah. or a, uh, cells. Okay, now when you remember your biology, uh, cells have been cut. So yeah. let me just narrow it down to that one. Mm. But now for bands, uh, they're exposed to heat. Mm -hmm. So uh, we normally say the proteins are uh, becomes uh, uh, denatured, as in the, the cells don't work normally. The cell is there as but a whole, but it doesn't work normally. So healing process is extremely slow. Or uh, if they, they are subjected to uh, uh, less or uh, 
negative thermal effect, then the cells become uh, deactivated, cease mm -hmm. to stop, stops to work completely. Okay. So that is why burns are funny mm -hmm. and healing becomes a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, so uh, subjected to heat, uh, the first aid normally say you remove uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the cause remove the try to remove the also yourself taking precautions not to be there the, the next victim uh, remove the cause if the patient was habited to hit uh, with caution mm -hmm. uh, you cool the wound eh? with caution you cool the wound there are several ways you can be able to do that uh -huh. you apply maybe uh, a cloth on top and then something cold on top as oh, in you pour like a liquid ice, or uh -huh. ice but not directly on the wound eh? okay. uh, you put something first like a cloth a clean cloth then uh, then I know also the issue of uh, some con have blisters already. Do you poke the blisters and suggest a, a, an entire model as well? Mm. Um, the home environment is not a guarantee of sterility. That's why we normally don't poke blisters. Uh, so those ones need to be seen in a facility. Uh, after you've removed the, the effect, if it's an electrical burn, uh, with caution, don't go touching them, we're trying to pull them off from the cables, just switch from the mains, switch off from the mains. Mm -hmm. uh, ensure this patient is in a clear place, also use safe distances from electri electrical cables and such. Uh, then uh, for electrical uh, injuries, those patients have to be seen in a facility because uh, electricity normally impairs uh, functions including brain conductivity and heart. Huh? Mm. So those ones need to be seen in a facility. As soon as possible, try to get options of getting to facility. For thermal uh, uh, events or chemical exposures, uh, those ones uh, we normally uh, need, uh, depending on the, on the severity. Uh, we normally say anything, ab this is how we normally uh, calculate percentage of burns. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are those that will indicate hospital admission, those that will just be seen as an outpatient, they are released to go home. So mm -hmm. there are those categories that uh, need to be seen. Okay. Uh, if you can be able to measure with your palm of your hand, this is, we normally call it 1%. So your body will be covered mm -hmm. by a hundred of your palm size. Eh? Oh. Uh, so 1%, anything can be covered by your hand. Okay, have it seen by a facility, though, though that's something that can be able to be managed from home, but have it seen in a facility. Okay. Those like from uh, 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 above, uh, these days, even if it's 5%, okay, sometime back we used to admit from 10%, these days even anything more, as long as it's deep penetrating into the uh, uh, deeper tissues, uh, regardless of the percentage, uh, might need to be admitted for what we normally call uh, early excision and maybe grafting. Okay, in a layman's language, remember you talked about uh, the cell being deactivated or uh, uh, damaged now that it's not responding. Mm -hmm. So if you cut that cell out, you convert this wound from a burn into a cut. Into a cut. Oh, yes, so it heals mm -hmm. quicker. Faster. Yes. Okay, so mm. now I'm known uh, cuts heal faster than than bands. If the tissues are still there. Yeah. If the tissues are still there. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what about for um, the category of people who have pre-existing conditions like diabetes and mm -hmm. those that have HIV? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those are some other uh, comorbids that has to be managed first. Uh, for instance, maybe I can talk more about diabetic uh, uh, patients. Yeah. You find that uh, they're having limitations in healing uh, because diabetes itself mm -hmm. has got complications. Uh, the most noticed complication is normally a reduction of blood supply to areas. That's why you find uh, patients end up with what you call peripheral arterial disease because mm -hmm. the arteries uh, collapse. There is less of a blood flow to extremities, you get these patients are subjected to mm -hmm. uh, dead tissues and gangrene. Uh, there are those patients who develop what we call neuropathies. They cannot be able to perceive sensation. They end up with a lot of sores. All these contribute to what we call uh, diabetic foot ulcers and okay. many other related uh, ulcers because of uh, diabetes. So healing normal or maybe to manage them, uh, mm -hmm. manage the underlying conditions first. Mm -hmm. uh, even for those with HIV, like uh, you need to boost on the immunity. Remember, the immunity is compromised. Mm -hmm. uh, immunity, okay, nutrition, and so forth. It's a lot of things that has to be boosted fast so that 
eventually even the wound can uh, be able to heal. Uh, for instance, there are those basic requirements for a wound to heal. Uh, 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 good protein intake, uh, that's, those are the building blocks for tissue regeneration and repair. Mm -hmm. uh, two, no infection, like uh, uh, treat uh, the, the, yeah. uh, the infection or maybe the bacteria that have come in. Mm -hmm. And then uh, three, we normally talk about uh, moisture balance. Remember some of the tissues uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of or too much moisture in the wound because of either the dressing material put on and such then also the type of tissue that you have are you having dead tissue are you having viable tissue check on them so there's a sequence that they normally follow uh, which helps you to identify we, we we're having like a, we call it like a time principle that is one mm. of the that help you to assess uh, time is an acronym like t stands for tissue inflammation, wow. infection, moisture balance, and the edges. Those are some of the uh, acronyms that makes it simpler to and assess and manage uh, okay. the wound. There are several others which are common, but uh, that's the key one currently. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, now back to infections, because uh, if you don't manage it well, I'm assuming that you'll get infections. Mm -hmm. What are the signs that um, the wound has been infected and uh, how should one go about it? Uh, infection mani manifests itself clearly. Uh, one, there is, uh, okay, there are two types of uh, infection. Mm -hmm. There is localized infection, whereby it's just the wound uh, that is showing manifestation of infection. Mm -hmm. And then two, when this patient is having either spreading or systemic infection. So when you want to say a wound is infected, there are those local, manif local signs. Uh, localized heat comes a little bit warmer than the surrounding uh, change of color it becomes red we call it there's a rhythm uh, then uh, the the tissue itself might change color uh, to darkening because of the infection infection sets into the wound itself okay. uh, we have change of exudate color exudate is that fluid coming from the wound can change color becomes mm -hmm. purulent or maybe it comes uh, uh, pass let me call it pass mm -hmm. uh, and healing is another sign of infection. The wound does not respond well. It means it's some deep-seated infection. Uh, it's a status normally called biofilm. Uh, so those are some of the common signs that can be able to find a patient has got local infection. Okay. When you talk about spreading infection, now the, the changes of the surrounding skin, we call it peri-wound skin, starts to change as well. Mm -hmm. The heat spreads to now the surrounding, even change of color. Now the manifestation of uh, uh, systemic infection, for instance, nausea and vomiting, that general weakness, uh, mm -hmm. system shutdown, loss of appetite. Now those are systemic signs of an infection, okay. which can be uh, originating from just the wound. One, okay. Uh -huh. uh, uh, can you manage an infection at home? Uh, no. Uh, uh, you can, that mm -hmm. is after uh, appropriate uh, prescriptions. Because uh, you see at times also maybe the hospital environment might, let's say, these patients who got immune suppression, the longer you keep them in hospital, there's this risk of uh, hospital-acquired infection. So the safest place to manage them is at home. Okay. Uh, so these patients are put on prescriptions and they can uh, recover from home. But definitely if there's an open wound uh -huh. with regular uh, or maybe monitored dressing mm -hmm. changes. Uh, all right. Yes. So apart from infection, what are some of the other factors that delay wound healing? Uh, no, those ones we call them chronicity. What causes chronicity as in what delays wound healing? Oh, okay. uh, apart from infection, uh, the underlying condition. We talked about diabetes, that, mm. uh, that those vascular issues like this limitation of blood supply. Uh, that is very naughty. Uh, underlying conditions are many. Uh, we have irritants or even even the kind of dressing put remember some practitioners maybe they don't have the knowledge of uh, these dressing materials you can put something on a wound which will complicate it further uh, instead of improving it it makes it uh, become worse mm -hmm. um, other factors like re injury uh, you get patients they have a wound then they have injured the same okay. place again so <laughs> okay. uh, also normally makes it uh, take a little bit longer to heal uh, mm. several factors yeah okay all right mm. interesting mm. now you mentioned that there's um 
there's been a lot of change from how wounds were being treated to how it is now. Mm -hmm. So what is this that has changed over time? Mm -hmm. Uh, I know what what cut across like now many Kenyans are from the history. Uh, you've gone to hospital and guys are using honey and sugar. I don't know if you if you're too young to remember that. You could go to a facility and when it comes to time for dressing, you think you're in a supermarket. Okay. There is this type of <laughs> a sugar market. brand, honey is from somewhere. As in, uh, uh -huh. these are some of the old methods. Uh, there mm -hmm. are some solutions which are used to clean a wound. Okay, uh, not really. Uh, uh, demeaning the companies manufacturing them like hydrogen peroxide we have some kind of iodine solution in the market this ones should never be put on the wood okay science have proven that they are not right being put on the wound mm. they cause more damage Thank on the good. cells some some you might not see like mm. immediately but in the long term those are some of the factors that contribute to prolonging the healing time okay. so technology has really come in handy to modify and to have a way of managing infection, moisture, uh, balance, and ensuring the tissues come quicker. So there are materials that have been uh, mm. engineered, scientifically engineered to help with that. Uh, for instance, I can just mention a few uh, yeah. uh, technologies. We have a uh, foam dressing, foam, just like the mattress foam, oh. but now this one is a foam dressing, a little bit thinner, not like not as thick as the a mattress. mattress. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit uh, thinner. It absorbs egg at the same time so they are impregnated with antibiotics. So you see, you put on an infected wood, this patient doesn't need to take oral antibiotics or to get shots for antibiotics. Yeah. If it's local and local infection, just put a local antibiotic to it. So it's addressing it, takes up the moisture and releases antibiotics. It helps the wound to dry up quicker. Okay. Uh, so it, it, it removes those older ways whereby you found mm -hmm. patients, you just dress a patient directly with gauze. You've seen uh, just a normal gauze put directly on a wound. Those are some of the things. Gauze, it doesn't, it doesn't have any medical benefit on the wound. Actually, it's like a foreign body. But these ones have been engineered to absorb. So we have others like uh, we call hydrofibers or alginates. Those ones are put in those deep wounds. They stimulate mm -hmm. granulation and uh, tissues to come up quick. We're having technologies like a negative pressure wound therapy. This is a device connected on a patient. It's portable. Uh, it takes out the exudate, minimizes contamination, even post-surgery. We use them a lot when you're doing a post-surgical uh, management or prevention of what we call surgical site infections. Uh, uh, then interventions like uh, uh, growth factor concentrate. Mm -hmm. uh, those are, there's some injection. Just ext get blood from just uh, get some blood from you. Uh -huh. We separate growth factors and everything. So growth factors are injected back. They stimulate quicker. Oh. Uh, then the same growth yeah. factors uh -huh. we use when when uh, even regenerating uh, uh, hair. Those with hair thinning. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, partial hair loss, which is not really genetic. Uh, so by that, it stimulates even hair regeneration. So when you even give it to a wound, it regenerates a new tissue's growth. We're having the same of uh, the protein-rich plasma, the PRP injections, mm -hmm. just from the blood. Uh, you, you know the body is compact, it has everything it needs. Okay. Uh, so we just get those ones, concentrate them and put them back. They oh. help, these are uh, uh, ways of uh, making things happen quicker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so technology has of co uh, come to change things up and make things better. Yes. Thank you very much for this uh, mm -hmm. amazing, insightful conversation, mm -hmm. Dr. Mm -hmm. Kennedy. Is mm -hmm. there one thing that you want to advise the youth regarding, uh, from everything that you've said regarding wound treatment, healing, and care? If you have, then that's the camera. Also, you can <laughs> share your handle where people can get you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, for the youths, okay, this is a, it's a, it's an interesting uh, <laughs> group. Uh, I know they are the ones who are at risk. Actually, uh, most uh, trauma-related wounds, we get them uh, affecting this particular age group. Eh? Mm. Uh, from uh, accident, fights, uh, because of exposure, they're really trying to, expo to explore more. So you find that mm -hmm. they... they end up with a lot of injuries. So go slow, be careful on uh, whatever you're doing, whichever activities, don't engage in activities that will uh, put you at risk of uh, injuries and uh, uh, subject you to wounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think that's what I can go tell the youth, just to be careful, cautious, careful with themselves. Eh? There are at risk of a lot of uh, injury. I know that those that come because of age, yeah, those that come because of lifestyle, mm -hmm. but the majority is those that are caused by trauma. Trauma wounds, uh, co uh, as in uh, composite of the majority Major percentage. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. So the common type. <laughs> yes, yes. So, and the youth are the ones who are at, at risk. Mm -hmm. Very active. Yeah. Uh, to get me uh, on my social handles, uh, mm -hmm. K Medicine Consult, uh, that cuts across all the uh, social platforms, K Medicine Consult. Uh, I'm available at uh, 40 Suits, Upper Hill. Uh, those for those who wants to physically come to to see me at a clinic okay thank yes. you very much dr much kennedy welcome, we welcome. appreciate you sharing uh, the insightful mm -hmm. uh, comments on this particular topic mm -hmm. that has been us discussing on uh you know wound healing treatment and uh, care with dr kennedy i hope you've taken something from it you being a youth make sure you tread carefully when you're having fun out there whatever you do make sure you take care of yourself that has been a health conversation we are going to take a short break then we'll be coming back to sample some of your comments on social media on the question that we asked you how do you create a balance between work life and uh, you know family talk to us the hashtag is one in the morning then after that we're going to have entrepreneur uh, we take a short break. We'll be right back.